The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. The praying church, the glorious church. I guess what you want me to deal with is how prayer can contribute to building a glorious church or the role of prayer in building a glorious church. So I'll be looking at that. Uh, from that dimension. I'll take some time to teach the scriptures. I want you to pay close attention to me as we navigate the scriptures together. I'll be talking about the church. When we are talking about the church, we are talking about the called out ones. People who have been called out to form God's new community, a people of God, that are supposed to be the salt and light of the earth. When we are talking about corruption in the world, it is no news when an unbeliever is corrupt because God knows that the world is corrupt. That is why the new community is supposed to be the salt. God knows that the earth, so far as the world is concerned, the sinners live in darkness. That is why we are supposed to be the light. Our understanding of the church is vital for us to transform our nations. When we are talking about the church, it is God's new community. Up until Jesus Christ came, died, and we believed in him, there were two classes of people. You were either a Jew or a Gentile. You either belonged to the Jews or you were outside the community of the Jews. We were supposed to be the people of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32, the scripture reads, 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God. So here you see that instead of saying whether Jew or Gentile or Jew or Greek, he introduced the third part, the church of God. And the church of God is God's new community. Up until the time that Jesus came to die, God had chosen Israel as his own. But Jesus Christ came and the game changed. Now the Bible says, whosoever will. So instead of taking Israel as his people, he decided that whosoever believes in Christ will not perish but have eternal life. So when you believe and you are a Jew, you are set aside. When you are believe and you are a Gentile, you are set aside. So those Jews and Gentiles who are reaching out for the salvation that is in Christ have been set aside to form God's new community called the church. It has another description in Galatians chapter 6, Galatians 6. Verse 15 and 16. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Now if he's saying neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, he's talking about the two classes of people. The circumcision, the Jews, uncircumcision, the Gentiles. Then he says, what counts is the new creation, the church. So this one brings the picture of the three communities in one verse. Neither uncircumcision or circumcision means anything. Otherwise, circumcision meant something. If you like, ask Moses. God almost killed him because he had not circumcised the children. Circumcision was legal because it was a covenant between God and Abraham. And he did it. And everyone who professes to be a Jew, the male had to be circumcised. So it mattered. You see, when Adolf Hitler wanted to destroy the Jews, 
He did a simple thing. Now, when they caught you and you were a man, they just drew down your pants. Just to find out whether you are circumcised. When you are circumcised, they take you for a Jew. So circumcision was something. But now he says that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. Uncircumcision too was something. Because if you were not circumcised, you were not accepted into even the, the synagogue, not at all. If you had to be accepted, you sat at the back. You were designated as a God-fearer. When service is over, you are the first to leave before the circumcised will come. But thanks be to God that in Christ Jesus, the game has changed. The Bible says, whosoever will, when you believe, you form the new creation. And the new creation is the church of God. The called out ones. We have been called out to belong to him as a people. But we are on a journey. We are now going to go home. This understanding should sit well with all of us. That we are a called out ones. A called out ones. Verse 16 says that peace and mercy to all who follow this rule. To the Israel of God. Now so we say Israel of God. It's a shift from the nation Israel. The Israel of God is a description of the church. We are now the Israel of God. Otherwise in the Old Testament... God chose Israel as his people. But now we, the church, we are described by scripture as the Israel of God. He didn't just choose us for naught. He chose us so that through us, we will be able to save the world. Just as he chose Abraham and then drew Israel from him. So that through Israel, he will save the other nations. He has chosen us so that the, those who are around who do not know him, will be saved. So Christianity is not just a play. No, we are not just come here to do some gimmicks. No, we are here as a people of God, listening to the master, washing our clothes in the blood, fashioning us, picking our teachings and hands to war, so that we will be able to save those who are going to hell. We have to pluck them from the fire, the church. But you see, the church It's supposed to be the light in the world. A people among the people. When I was growing up, I told myself that any time that ministers met, I want to be their pastor. And I had that at the back of my mind. So when we met and people were joking and talking and all that, I, I joined them because if you don't become part of the world, you can't transform it. I will all move together. But I wanted them to see something more than just a pastor amongst them. This is what I want to challenge all of us to become. Men among men. Women among women. Very, very important. This church that God has called out. He is fashioning us to be like an image. Second Corinthians chapter 3. He is fashioning us to be like an image. Second Corinthians chapter 3. I'll take the last verse. And we all who with unveiled faces, this is when Paul was talking about the fact that when Moses was up there on the mountain, when he came back after 40 days, he had to veil his face because he had changed and because the people couldn't behold his face. His own brothers, siblings were running away. That glorious face. He says that what we have is better than just a face shining. That he says that in Christ Jesus, the veil is removed. And we all with unveiled faces, we are not like Moses. Contemplates the Lord's glory. We, 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 we gaze on his glory. Are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory. 
So when you become a Christian, there is an image set before you. And the Bible says, as you behold the image, you are being transformed into the image that you see. From glory to glory. This must be told to all churches. We are not just churching. The issue is not about anointing oil. The issue is not about catch anointing. The issue is not about water. The issue is not about angels. It is not about, about emblems and whatever. It is about that image. Jeremiah, let's go into the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 18. Are we together? Jeremiah 18. I read from verse 1. This is God speaking through Jeremiah to Israel. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. Go to where somebody is fashioning pots. And when you get there, from what he's doing, I'll tell you something. This is what he means. So I went down to the potter's house. And I saw him working on the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was mad in his hands. Somehow, the, the clay couldn't stick well. He was shaping a pot from a clay. But the clay kept mad in his hands. It seems like it was not that sticky. So sometimes you have to work on the clay. Work on the clay, put some water on it and all that. Then he says that, but I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working on a wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was mad in his hands. So the potter formed it. The potter still did not give up on what he was doing. Neither on the clay or on what he wanted to do. So he said he formed it into another pot. Shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to him. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like lay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, Israel. But today Jesus will say, like lay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, O church. Instead of saying Israel. So once you get born again, he's fashioning you. He's fashioning you to conform to a certain image as seem good in his sight. But you see, God does not work alone. We are co-workers. So what he is fashioning us to become, it is not hidden in him. Otherwise, I cannot be co-worker with him. So somehow, he has revealed as to what he wants to do with us. Have I communicated? Fine. But let's go back to the verse 4. And I like the King James Version. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another. That is the expression I like. Yeah. He made it again another. The very old, old, old versions will say he made it the same another. How can you make something the same another? See, that is why in our contemporary English, we have moved away from that. But it makes a lot of sense when you take the old, old version. He made it the same another vessel. So that when God gets hold of me and I become a member of the church, he doesn't change my appearance. He doesn't change anything. But he makes me the same another. Yeah, this thing. He makes me the same another vessel. So you cannot remain same, same, same. That which church do you belong to? So many churches on campus. Every 50 meters in Accra, there's a church. Tomorrow comes Sunday, churches all over. But the nation is not changing. It's because we are not changing. The fault is not with him. The fault is in the clay. If you allow yourself, he will make you the same. Another verse. 
and you'll be a factor of change in his hands. So I'm saying that there's an image that he wants to work at to become. We'll become the same, but another reflecting that image that he has set before us. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus went to pray with his disciples. And there appeared two important personalities in the Old Testament. Moses representing the law. Elijah representing the prophet. But in the Old Testament, God led his people by the law and thou sayest the Lord. Two. So Israel's instructions comes from the law or from the prophet who say, thou sayest the Lord. So these two people who came there are representing the way that God channeled Israel. They represent how God wanted to lead them through the law and the prophetic voice. Then they appeared there. Somehow Peter saw that it was Moses and then Elijah talking to the master Jesus. He had changed. He was the same but another. You could see him that this is Jesus but you see, there is this glory, that this abiding glory, that clothes the man of God. Sometimes you are unaware, like Moses, your face will shine, but you are unaware. Peter said, is it not the same Jesus? But somehow he could see and see Moses and see Elijah, but something happened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, the three of them, or maybe one, two, three, plus three. Let's say how many of them? Six of them. And a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love, listening to him. It is a ten from the law, and from that says the law. That is why Hebrews says that in the past, God spoke to us by his prophets. But now, he speaks to us through his son. So when Jesus was teaching, sometimes you hear him say that you have heard it said, but I say unto you. Because so far as he is concerned, Moses is dealt with, thou say the Lord is dealt with. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It, the, all the others are dealt with. He is now the way. He is the voice of God. He is the word. He is the truth. Somehow, he said, this is my son, listen to him. And the Bible says, suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. So who was the voice referring to? Jesus. Not Moses. Not Elijah. But Jesus, now listen, he says that this is the one I love. The other version says in John, he says that in him I am well pleased. So he says that he is fashioning us into an image, a certain image, as pleasing to him. Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined. To be conformed to the image, a certain image of his son, Jesus Christ. So that all of us that God saw from afar. And we have accepted Jesus as Lord and has been separated to be part of the church. He is fashioning us to conform to a certain image. And the Bible says that the image of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Until you are like him, you have not arrived yet. It is not so much about who is the chairman of the church of Pentecost. It is not so much about people who call themselves the puppets of the land. It is not so much about the bishop and the archbishops. I don't believe in that. There's only one apostle. Only one bishop. Of our soul, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
only one bishop of our soul. It doesn't matter who you are as a pastor. It doesn't matter who you are in this gathering. We are all supposed to be like him. Jesus said, if you have seen me, then it is okay. Because you have seen the Father. The Bible said the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him. He is a full expression of who God is now. He is not here. I challenge you. That we are representing him. And you should live like that when anyone saw you, you would have seen the Father. Shall we bow down our heads for a moment? Then begin to reflect. It's not about what I do in secret, no. I don't want you to fear anyone. With some gladness, put this image before you and tell yourself, I want to be like Jesus. That is the goal. That is where we are all heading towards to. Sunde bakayande. Oh, kabayande. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him mm-hmm. from earth to glory mm-hmm. all I, I say is to be like him to be like Jesus I am Send it to be like Jesus. All I ask is to 